Go ahead. So here we're gonna go through a basic hip examination. Uh, we're gonna test the right, right side here. So I'd like you to first lift your, leg, your right leg straight up in the air, hold it there. Does that bother you? A little bit. And I'd like to ask the patient where it hurts. So if it hurts in their groin versus in their back, I think that's an important finding. If the patient reports that they don't have any pain, I'll test them to a little bit of resistance. So straight leg raise with resistance, same question again, do you have pain in either area and in, uh, in front? Then uh, just going through some range of motion. So straight flexion, high flexion. The leg and extension helps to stabilize the pelvis onto the table. And uh, it's, a, it's somewhat of a simple, um, in the sense that it shouldn't be a forceful push into, into a flexion so that the pelvis again doesn't rock and getting a feel for where, what that end point is without rocking it. So that you get an angle approximately of where that is um, and you can make note of that. Then you can do rotational measurements at 90 degrees of hip flexion. So external rotation, same thing again, trying not to rock the pelvis. Um, this can also be done in a seated position so that the pelvis is stabilized and uh, you're not getting pelvic rotation um, at the time that that's being tested. So this is approximately 45 degrees and then internal rotation again with the hip flex at 90 degrees and to end range of motion. So approximately 30 degrees in this case. Then oftentimes I'll just go directly into the provocative tests of hip pain. So flexion internal rotation and adduction. So the fader, fader test, flexion, adduction, I, I, internal rotation, F, A, D as in dog, I, R, pain or no pain, again, where are they hurting? Acute discomfort. The other test uh, that you can do then is also the favor test, flexion, abduction, external rotation, and uh, seeing if that's painful at end range of motion or not. Um, other tests that um, I do commonly, again, going through a basic exam, depending on findings in the patient, this may differ, uh, but a basic young uh, otherwise healthy uh, um, patient, is, uh, this would be a common test. So testing for abductor uh, insertional pain over the greater trochanter, ask the patient if any of that bothers them. Um, if, particularly if they point towards the back, I may check for hamstring origin tenderness um, in the back. Um, you can check for along the iliac crest as well as at the AESIS uh, for any pain in those areas. If they complain of a lot of medial pain or more central pain, an examination in that area may be relevant. Uh, looking at the pubic uh, uh, tubercle and, or the origin of the adductor tendon, you can also palpate the adductor tendon, especially if they're having pain in that area, um, and particularly at the origin. Um, I find it helpful sometimes to do a, a rock test of the pelvis just to see if they have any pain with that uh, related to athletic pubalgia. Also, any sort of abdominal testing, so an abdominal crunch uh, can be done looking for if they have more proximal pain consistent with athletic pubalgia. You can also palpate the rectus abdominis at the time of the, um, at the, at the distal aspect of it to see if that hurts, asking them too if that's uh, bothering them. You can also have them do obliques to one side or the other. Again, if you're suspicious of more proximal uh, pain such as an athletic or central pain in athletic pubalgia. Um, Otherwise, a basic neuro examination, so testing for sensation up and down the leg on both sides, including plantarly, uh, doing tests for uh, uh, posterior tibial uh, arteries, check for palpation of the nodes. Those are uh, generally are going to all be normal. Um, the last thing I routinely do is just do a basic uh, spine examination. So I'll have you stand up. So uh, bend forward, touch your toes with your knees straight. See how far down they can go. I'm looking for laxity. Patients who are really flexible, I get concerned about a hip laxity potentially. So if they can do a palm to four deformity, um, I, I'll check them for additional areas of laxity. Uh, or if they're a patient that I'm suspicious of laxity in the first place, um, I generally do a Bayton's criteria on hip patients um, unless they're, they're stiff uh, on the uh, exam table uh, with these initial tests. Extension, full extension as far back as they can go and then rotational left and right, and doing a, a palpation in the lumbar spine, palpation over the pair of spinals, and then palpation at the SI joint. You can do testing also for sciatic notch tenderness, 
and then as well as over towards the piriformis and the insertion of the piriformis. Thank you.